to the motherfucking relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. Ahead of what is her bid to become the WBC's featherweight champion, Sky Nicholson is flying the flag for Australia in Las Vegas on the undercard of Hitchens versus Lemos. Nicholson has already won honors for her country in the amateurs with Commonwealth gold placed around her neck at her home games in 2018 and in her 10th pro fight. Nicholson can add a world title strap to her collection if she can see off former world title champion Sarah Mafood of Denmark. The 28-year-old's title tilt comes off the back of a chastening weekend in America for Australian fighters in world title bouts with Tim Zhu surrendering his crown in a bloody battle against Sebastian Fundora in Vegas and Michael Zarafa and Liam Wilson getting stopped in their fights against Arislandi Lara and Oscar Valdez. The old saying goes that bad things, bad things happen in threes and last weekend they did for Australian boxers, Australian boxing. Now can Sky turn things around? I think she can, I think she will. Sky Nicholson has grand designs on landing one of the biggest fights out there against Amandia Serrano, and knows that beating the Dane to win her first world title would bring the fight closer to reality and would provide a huge shot in the arm for the sport in her beloved homeland. We've had a few female world champions in Australia, and I'm excited to be a part of that movement and to be one of the girls that the younger generation are looking up to and aspiring to be like, said Nicholson. I know I have an important job as a role model, not just for kids in Australia, but around the world. A lot of athletes have an important position in shaping the lives of girls and boys, and I take that responsibility seriously. She's still after Amanda? If Sky Nicholson wins this weekend, and becomes WBC champion, it'll be down to just her and Amanda. They'll be the only two champions at featherweight. And while she might still have Amanda in her plans, I don't get the sense that Amanda has Sky in hers. Amanda has her own plans, and she did ink a deal with the PFL. She was supposed to fight Nina Menke on her island of Puerto Rico, but she suffered an eye injury and was unable to do that. Now, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see her make her next ring appearance on the undercard of Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. I just don't get the sense that Sky is a part of Amanda Serrano's plans. I follow a lot of the young girls boxing in Australia, like Ella Vason, Sienna Murray, Maya Layard, and Tiana Rue, and they are killing it. The growth of female boxing is huge. Women's boxing is in its infancy, and where it's going to be in the next 10, 20 years is very exciting, and I'm really proud to be a part of that development. The Australian boxing community just wants to get more eyes on the sport. That's really been Australia's struggle. We're a big country with a small population, and it makes it really hard to get the backing and support that the athletes need. The stuff that we're doing here around the world is aimed at growing the sport in Australia to bring big fights there. Sky has had the privilege of boxing in the United Kingdom, the United States, south of the border, in Mexico, and the goal is to enhance Australian boxing's profile overall around the world. She might be able to. Aside from Amanda, she's the most recognizable featherweight in the featherweight division. Tim, Tim Kazoo, has led the way and has got Australian boxing on the map, and hopefully that's going to bring big fights to Australia. That's what I want to do as well. And for me, the dream is to fight for Undisputed against Amanda Serrano in Australia. I don't know about that. Say it all the time. Amanda is making good money, very good money, and I think it would take even better money to have her fly out all the way to Australia to be the away fighter in Sky's neck of the woods. Better pay to play. Before it even comes to that, she better make it past Sarah Mafood this weekend. The silver lining is I think she's going to. Last weekend was a rough weekend of fights for Australian boxing and Australian boxes, but this weekend may herald a surge for the Aussies. Sky's not the only Australian fighter that's going to be fighting for a world title in the near future. There is also Lynn Sandstorm. She's hot. Who will be challenging Argentina's own Clara Lascura for the WBA title at Super Flyweight at Bantam. You have Shernika Johnson, who's going to be challenging Nina Hughes for her WBA title very soon. Upstairs at Cruiserweight, former IBF champion and Jai Opataya will attempt to reclaim the title that was stripped from him by the IBF when he takes on Mayris Breedis 
foot a second time. And with Sky Nicholson, that makes four. So where last weekend, Australia may have lost one world title, one world champion. Very soon, they may gain more. They may gain four. 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 Fingers crossed. I expect Sky Nicholson to take care of business this weekend. I expect her to usher in what could be a new assembly line of Australian champions. New, so to speak. Yeah, because Sharnika Johnson, she was a champion up there at 122 already, and, and Jai, he was a champion already. He was just stripped of his title. Do you know what I mean? Last weekend was a rough weekend for Australian fighters. This one may usher in a new era! Why are you yelling? I got a little bit excited. I like Sky Nicholson's ambition. She's growing on me. She's a good kid. So let's see how she fares against Denmark's own Sarah Mafood this weekend. Personally, I think she's going to do all right. As junior middleweight news, I'm sure most of you have heard by now that a commission ruling will sideline Sebastian Fundora until late September. We won't be seeing him for a while. Which leaves a lot of these plans we've been talking about up in the air. There's a lot of uncertainty. The Nevada State Athletic Commission informed new WBO and WBC junior middleweight champion Sebastian Fundora on Tuesday that he is physically suspended from fighting until late September. Fundora suffered a broken nose during the first round of his surprise split decision victory over then unbeaten WBO title holder Tim Zhu of Australia in Las Vegas on Saturday, immediately after Fundora's upset victory. The WBO informed his team that the fighter would be allowed until April 25th to negotiate a title defense against mandatory super WBO super champion turned WBO mandatory challenger Terence Crawford. In a text message on Tuesday night, a WBO official explained the boxing scene its order to Fundora. When a WBO champion suffers an injury, the championship's committee issues a letter titled Interim Medical Certification, whereby the fighter through his representatives is required to submit in writing to the WBO a detailed medical report of his injury and his physician's findings and prognosis, including his recovery time period. Upon receipt of such evidence, the committee shall determine the next course of action per our governing regulations. The Nevada Commission's decision obviously compromises the WBO's order. A boxing official told Boxing Scene on Tuesday that Fundora will most likely not even begin training until late September. If the guy can't begin training, training until late September, that means he won't be able to return to action until sometime in December. The amount of time that Sebastian Fudora will spend away from the ring has given rise to suspicions that what this really is is the PBC's effort to keep all of those belts on their side of things. They're afraid that if Sebastian fights Terrence, he'll lose the belts. I've seen people saying that. That if he were to comply with the WBO's order and defend his title titles against Terrence Crawford, he would lose them both in one fell swoop so soon after winning them. I've seen people saying that. It's neither here nor there because legitimate or otherwise. If this rings true, we won't be seeing Sebastian in there with anybody. Won't see him in there with Terrence, won't see him in there with Spence or Tim Zhu for a second time. Not if he isn't cleared to train until late September. It's up to the WBO now how they wish to proceed because the order already came down for Sebastian to fight Terrence, but he can't, at least not according to his doctors. So what do they want to do? Do they want to give him amnesty or do they want to strip him? Because they could do that too. We've seen that before. I remember when Joe Cordina knocked out Kenichi Ogawa for what was the IBF title at 130 pounds. In the process of doing that, he suffered a hand injury that left him unable to satisfy his mandatory challenger. Due to the prognosis and estimated recovery time, knowing that he wouldn't be able to satisfy his mandatory within the allotted time frame, they decided to strip him. They took his belt. He eventually won it back, though, all the same. The IBF did that before. Could the WBO do that now? They might. The way these sanctioning bodies work and what is written into their bylaws protects them to do so, do as they wish, operate however they see fit. And I always got the sneaking suspicion that Paco Vericell and the people at the WBO are sympathetic to Terence Crawford, and they're not gonna let Sebastian's prognosis and his time away hold up what is supposed to be Terence's title shot. It's a possibility. Seeing that Sebastian won't be ready to fight any time in the near future, they might strip him and then order a fight between Terence Crawford and their number one contender, Josh Kelly. What? Terrence Crawford is said to be a network and promotional free agent, whereas Josh Kelly 
I think he's with Vazerman. I think he's with Kale and Nisei Sauerland. Do they want to put Josh Kelly in there with Terrence Crawford? Would they pay for this fight? If they don't, Erickson Lubin, he's ranked at number two, ranked right behind Josh Kelly, and he's a PBC guy. Just the other day, I saw Erickson's trainer advocating for a fight between Erickson Lubin and Terrence Crawford for what could be the newly vacated WBO title. I don't know, man. As far as the WBC and Sebastian potentially defending it against Errol Spence Jr., like I said, if this guy's not going to be cleared to train until late September, that pushes a potential fight with Spence way out there. Well, wait a minute. Didn't Samson Lukowicz say that they were going to honor the verbal agreement with Tim Zhu's people, his team, to give him a rematch? Didn't he say that? Yeah, he did, but this development from the Nevada State Athletic Commission and Sebastian Fundora's doctors, his estimated recovery time and that prognosis sidelines him for most of the year, whereas Tim... I expect him to come back. Over the summer months, summer in the northern hemisphere, winter in the southern. What I view as the byproduct of dealing with these people that as soon as they realized that Charlo fight wasn't going to happen, they should have took their belt and took their business elsewhere. Take it over to top rank and do some business with Matchroom. What are you dealing with these schmucks for? And look at where it got you. Just as soon as Samson Lukowicz said that they were going to give Tim Zhu his rematches, just as soon as it took for this news to break, the but Sebastian's gonna be out for most of the year. Most of what remains. What should Tim do? Target the winner of Mertizaliev versus Kolke. Whoever it is, whether it's Jack Kolke or Bakram Mertizaliev. Challenge the winner of that fight for that alphabet title. Tim's recovery time, it's just a matter of weeks. Kolke versus Mertizaliev is set to go down this weekend in Germany. Whoever wins that fight. Tim should target the winner because it's not going to take him all that long to recover. It's just a matter of weeks. Bring them to Australia where you can bill it as a pay-per-view, where you could do it in front of a lot of people. I'm sure that many of those Aussies would get out there to support their guy after what happened to him in America. Target the winner of that fight. Unless you want to spend the majority of the year, what remains of it, sitting on your hands and hoping that Samson Lukowicz will honor his word because of the man of honor that he is. Waiting for Sebastian. You let these people hold up your career before. You're going to let them hold up your career again. This is what you get for dealing with these people. The year that he fought Terrell Gachet, it was the only fight that he had that year. He suffered an injury throughout the course of the fight. He had to recover, but then Charlo suffered an injury. Supposedly. And he didn't get to fight him. The fight between them got moved to early, early in the following year. He didn't get to fight him then either. He's not going to. It's been fucking with your schedule ever since you started dealing with these guys. It's been fucking with you and fucking with your schedule. It's time to break away. Things didn't get back to normal for Tim until he got back to Australia. And No Limit was at the helm of promotions. That's what he needs to get back to. Stop trying to make nice with the PBC. Stop trying to make nice and rub elbows with the Americans. They're not trying to help you. He needs to salvage what remains of this year. Upstairs in men's middleweight news, unified middleweight champion Yannibek Alamkanalai asks, Lara has the WBA title. Question, why isn't he interested in two more titles? I can fight him anywhere. Why aren't the middleweights chasing the titles like me? What's the point of holding one title? I don't understand. I need two more titles. Good luck getting them. They're stuck on PBC Island. Lara, who we just mentioned, Lara, he's got one, and Jermo Charlo's got the other. But he's up there at super middleweight, and the World Boxing Council doesn't seem at all interested in stripping him or ordering the fight between him and Carlos Adamez, the WBC interim champion. This has to be one of the most uninteresting eras of middleweight action, in action. The middleweight division, today's middleweight division, pales in comparison to how it used to be at 160 and how it is now. I don't think Jim Charlo's coming back down. I don't think there's much chance of that happening, him campaigning as a middleweight. And if by some chance he did, it wouldn't be to go fight Yanni back. I don't think he's going to have much luck with Lara either. Lara, who only fought for, what was it, one or two rounds this past weekend before stopping Michael Zarafa? Lara's been averaging one fight a year for the last two or three years. He hasn't been that active, and he's getting up there in age. He's registered as being 
in his early 40s, assuming he's not actually older and he's been lying about it the way that Cuban defectors often do. In any event, he's a PBC fighter. He's been a PBC fighter for as long as I can remember, and I really don't expect that to change. The counterintuitive nature of the way these fighters and their teams do business. Look at Roly. Roly had the chance to parlay a gift stoppage over Ishmael Barroso and do a big payday with Ryan. And what did they have him do? They had him fight on an undercard for less against Isaac Cruz just to end up losing for less money. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make business sense. Not for the fighter, not for the fighter's team or his management. It doesn't make any sense at all. But that's what happened with Roly. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happens with Lara because Lara, pay attention, in the WBA's current rank standings, you got a kid that goes by the name Elijah Garcia. He's ranked at number one by way of the WBA and in a pole position to become Lara's mandatory challenger. And it just so happens that Elijah, like Lara, he's a PBC guy. At least he has been his last couple of fights. That's where he's been fighting on the PBC side of things. So what the PBC might have Lara do is wait. Shelve him like they've been doing the last two or three years. He's only been averaging one fight a year for the last two or three years. They might shelve him until such a time as Elijah is ready to challenge him for that WBA title to make sure that it doesn't go to someone else. They won't sacrifice Lara to another promotional outfit. Sorry for Yanni Beck, but he's not going to get to unify. I don't think he is, and I'd love to be wrong about this, but I don't think I will be. Of course, Lara, at his age, could parlay a unification match with Yanni Beck into a big payday via top rank, because top rank is desperate to get Yanni Beck Alam Kanalai opponents, so Lara could make a decent chunk of change for fighting him. God only knows they're not breaking the bank on the fights that he is having. Greg Vendetti, Cornflake LaMata, Michael Zarafa. What do you think they're paying him to fight these people? Not a lot. He could probably get paid more for fighting Yanni Beck, but for fighting Yanni Beck, he might lose. He might lose his title. So before the PBC lets that happen, they'll have him lose it to one of their own. One of their own fighters, Elijah Garcia. Young guy, southpaw, he's not bad. Just telling you, the middleweight division is a dud, and I don't expect to see any unification matches happen there for Yanni back. He's fucked.